After the conquest of Mecca by the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, the Messenger of the Prophet called out this in the streets of Mecca. Whoever in Mecca closes the door of his house and refrains from using weapons, he is given security. At the same time, the Prophet said, the wounded will not be killed. Who turns his back and runs away will not be pursued. Those who are captured will not be killed. And he also gave amnesty to all the people of Mecca, leaving their lives, property and children untouched. A tent made of leather was pitched for the Prophet peace be upon him at the site of Hajjud near the present day Masjid al Jinn. When the Prophet was asked, are you not going to enter your house in Mecca? The Prophet said, did Akil leave us a house? Akil bin Abu Talib was the elder brother of Hazrat Ali, who was 20 years older than him. The Prophet had two houses in Mecca. One was the house in Ship Ibani Ali, in which he was born, which was inherited from his mother. The other was the house of his wife Khatija, between Safa and Marwa, behind the Atar Bazaar. After the migration of the Prophet peace be upon him to Medina, Akil bin Abu Talib seized these two houses and sold them. The Prophet was told, then stay outside your house in one of the houses of Mecca. The Prophet peace be upon him said, I will not enter the houses and settled in the tent prepared for him. In the morning, the Prophet left his tent and moved towards the Kaaba with his companions. As the Prophet peace be upon him entered the Kaaba with his army, Abu Sufyan was sitting in front of the Kaaba, thinking, Should I gather troops for Muhammad? Should I go back to fight this man again? What should I do? The Prophet peace be upon him stopped in front of him and said, Then Allah will make you despised and humiliated again. Abu Sufyan looked up and saw the Prophet standing next to him. Until now, I was not convinced that you are indeed a Prophet, and I repent to Allah and ask his forgiveness for the delusions I had in my heart. Then, the Prophet peace be upon him gave a sermon to the people at the Kaaba. He invited the non-Muslims to Islam and invited them to make the declaration of allegiance to Islam. All Meccans, men and women, big and small, came to swear allegiance to the Prophet. Many polytheists, including Abu Quhafa, Haris bin Hisham and the sons of Abu Lahab, became Muslims and swore allegiance to our Prophet. Even Suhail bin Amr, Ikrma bin Abu Jahil and Safwan bin Umayyah were given amnesty and invited to Islam and they too became Muslims. After the conquest of Mecca by the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, the polytheists of Khawazin who were in the surrounding areas began to gather armies thinking that it was their turn. Taking all their property, women and children with them, the Khawazin came to the place of al Autas, and tribes from all sides began to come to the aid and gather at al Autas. When the Sarkif people living in Taif joined the Khawazin, a large army of 14 to 20,000 people was formed. The Prophet peace be upon him heard that the Khawazin and the Sakib were preparing to fight. He called Abdullah bin Abi Hadrat al-Islami. He ordered him to go to the Khawazin and stay among them and bring news until he could go among the people and get the information about them. Abdullah bin Abi Hadrat went out and went to the Khawazin. He wandered around the camps of the Khawazin. He went as far as Malik bin Af. He found the leaders and the commanders of the Khawazin with him. Malik bin Af said to his companions, Muhammad will never fight again after this time. He has only ever fought and defeated tribes who had no knowledge of warfare 
At dawn, you will line up your animals, women and children behind you. Then you will line up your soldiers. When you meet the Muslims, you will attack. Break the scabbards of your swords. Attack all together as one man. Know well that the first to attack is the one to be defeated. He heard and memorized it. He estimated the number of the gathered army to be around 20,000. Abdullah bin Abi Hadrat stayed among the Khawazin for a day or two and then returned and reported to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him all that he heard and seen. When the Prophet heard the news of the Khawazin from Abdullah bin Abi Hadrat, he hastened to prepare to meet them. The Prophet appointed At-Tab bin Asid as the governor of Mecca and Muaz bin Jabal as the teacher of Sunnah and Fiqh. Safwan bin Umayyah, who had not yet converted to Islam at that time, lent the Islamic army 100 pieces of armor and 100 swords along with 40,000 dirhams. Naufal bin Harith also lent 3,000 spears to the Islamic army. On Saturday, Shawwal V, the Prophet set out from Mecca to Hunayn with an army of 12,000 men. The Prophet had come with 10,000 Muslims to conquer Mecca. 2,000 of the newly converted Meccans, who had heard of the preparations for war, had joined the Islamic army. Another 80 Quraysh, who had not yet become Muslims, joined the Islamic army for beauty. Abu Sufyan followed behind the army, picking up every fallen shield, sword and spear he came across and carrying them on his camel. Malik bin Nav, the commander-in-chief of the Khawazin armies, had sent some of his men as spies. There were three of them and they would spy on the Prophet peace be upon him and his companions and scatter among the Islamic camp. They would bring news to Malik bin Av about the condition of the Muslims. The spies returned to Malik in a nervous and trembling state. Malik bin Av said to them, Shame on you! What is this state of affairs? The spies said, We saw such men, with white, shining faces and on pied horses that we could not help falling into the state you have seen. We, the people of the earth, cannot fight them. If we were the people of heaven, we would fight them. Their eyes would move hearts. If you listen to us, go back to your people immediately. If those people see what we see, they will be in the same condition as we are in. Malik bin Av said, No, you are a cowardly group in the camp. He arrested them with him so that they would not cause fear and dissension in the army. These words of the spies could not stop Malik bin Av from doing what he wanted to do. At dawn, the Prophet put the Muslims in battle formation. When they landed in the valley of Hunayn, a large vanguard moved forward for reconnaissance. As the vanguard advanced between the two mountains, the Khawazin suddenly came out of their hiding places and began raining arrows on the Islamic army from the right and left. The Khawazin were such sharp marksmen that none of their arrows were wasted. Unable to withstand the sudden and fierce barrage of arrows, the cavalry of the Slaymets broke up and retreated followed by the Meccan cavalry and the others broke up and dispersed in their wake. In the darkness of the morning, the Khawazin people emerged from around the mountains and began to chase the fugitives with all their might which frightened the Islamic army. When Anas bin Malik saw this army, he said that he had never seen such a large army before. Since it was still dark and not clearly visible, the army of Khawazin was coming towards the Muslims like a great black storm.
This Lamigami, which had not yet entered the battle, experienced great fear and began to flee. Our prophet peace be upon him, was standing upright with his sword in his hand, calling out to those who were retreating. Where are you going? O oh people, come towards me. I am the messenger of Allah. O oh Muhajireen, O oh Ansar, I am the servant and messenger of Allah. Show patience and perseverance. But the camels were tangled and the people were running away as far as they could. There was no one left with the Prophet except some of the Muhajireen and Ansar and his family members. Seeing the 100 Mujahideen clustered around the Prophet, the Khawarizin attacked rapidly. The Prophet peace be upon him also attacked the enemy army. His uncle Abbas, who was with the Prophet at the time, started shouting at the top of his lungs. O oh companions who swore allegiance to the Messenger of Allah under the tree of Samura, where are you? Hearing the voice of Hazrat Abbas, the members of the Ansar and Khazraj tribes stopped running and returned saying, Labbaik, Labbaik, and started to turn back. Catch up, O oh Muhajireen, O oh Ansar, come O oh Muhajireen, come O oh Ansar, come O oh horsemen of Allah. Shouts filled the entire battlefield, and those who had fled began to regroup. Muslims from all sides began to rush furiously at the Khawazin. The Prophet was surrounded by the soldiers of the Khawazin. Hazrat Uthman, Hazrat Ali, Abu Dujana and Ayman bin Ubaid were fighting in front of the Prophet. On that day, Hazrat Ali was the fastest, most fierce and violent of those who fought in front of the Prophet. It was at that time that the Prophet peace be upon him asked Allah for help and victory. O oh Allah, send down your help to us. O oh Allah, I ask you to fulfill your promise to me. O oh Allah, surely you do not want them to be victorious over us. When the Prophet stood on his grey mule with his stirrups and saw the Muslims attacking the Khawazin with swords, he said, This is the time when the thunder is on fire. Soon after the Prophet prayed, the people of Khawazin became frightened and began to disperse. The Muslims began to chase them all together. When the Khawazin, who later became Muslims, were asked what had caused them to suddenly retreat on the day of Hunayn, they all unanimously stated that they had heard a violent ringing in their minds, like iron grains rattling in an iron ball, and that a great fear had come over them. Certainly, Allah helped you in many battlefields, and on the day of Hunayn, when your great numbers made you vain, but they availed you nothing, and the earth became straight to you, notwithstanding its spaciousness, then you turned back retreating. Then Allah sent down his tranquility upon his messenger and upon the believers, and sent down armies which you did not see, and chastised those who disbelieved. And that is the punishment of the unbelievers. The Prophet ordered the Muslims to push through the fleeing enemies. When the Khawazins were defeated, the Sarkifids of Taif also broke down and retreated to the fortress of Taif. Malik bin Af, the commander-in-chief of the Khawazin army, took refuge in the fortress of Taif with the Khawazin. From time to time, the Muslims killed or captured the fleeing Khawazin and Sarkif tribesmen. Since the Khawazin had come to Hunayn with all their possessions, the Islamic army took a lot of beauty. The Prophet forbade the killing of women, children and slaves. 
The Meccan polytheists in the Islamic army were frightened at the first wave and left the battlefield. Thus, they could not benefit from the beauty they wanted. The Prophet, peace be upon him, gathered his army and ordered the siege of the fortress of Taif, where the people of Khawazin and Sarkif had fled and hid. Thank you for watching our video. Your support means the world to us as it helps us to continue creating quality content. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting and sharing it with your friends and family. We appreciate your engagement and feedback which motivates us to keep producing more content. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.